All right, so now that I got the boxes off the front porch, now we're gonna unbox them. I already uh, blanked out all the important bits on the labels. Um, we're gonna do the small boxes and then the big Mishimoto box. Uh, this is the, pretty much the first set of packages that are arriving from Eurotuning.com uh, for the Patreon built VR6 Turbo build. Um, so let's get ready, let's start unboxing. So. This is a good way to start pretty much our current segue to our sponsor, which is Eurotuning.com. Now, a quick word from them. Oh, what's going on, Pinche Al? What are you doing today, man? Hey, what's going on, Al? Yeah, I'm just uh, working on the VR6 uh, turbo right here that I'm building for our Patreon members. And doggone it, I'm looking for some parts. And I just can't seem to find them online. I just don't know where to go. Well, it looks like to me, you need to go to Eurotuning.com to get the parts that you're looking for. What? Eurotuning.com's got all the parts that I need for my VR6? Oh man, I appreciate that, Al. I'm gonna get on over to my computer and order something from Eurotuning.com. Be right back, buddy. <laughs> Wow, my package arrived! That was super fast! Thank you, Eurotuning.com! Now with that out of the way, let's open up the small box first. Alright, we're gonna go small, medium, large. Hopefully this is good stuff. Um, I'm not a big fan of fancy unboxing. I just like unboxing stuff. You know? So all those people out there, you know, doing super expensive unboxing. I guess if you guys like that stuff, go for it, but this is kind of how I do it. Ah, the mass airflow sensor. You're going to see one of these chonkers. This is a four inch MAF. This is from an Audi uh, S4. This is what was recommended for our tune coming up soon. Um, wow, this thing got here quick. I ordered this yesterday. So, wow, I'm not gonna complain. It's an OEM Bosch. So it's not a cheap aftermarket part. It's actually OEM. So there's that. Not bad. If you guys want the part number for that, it's pretty straightforward. Here you go. 0280-218-067. All right, there's the first order. This is trash. All right, now the medium box. I know what's in this box because I only ordered one thing from this company, so. But you guys will see it when I open it. Another box. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right, all right. I'm excited. Innovate. This is a wide band O2 sensor gauge uh, pod. Or O2 sensor gauge, yeah. Um, this is where we get live feedback for pretty much our big turbo car. And I went and got the best one we can get for the car. So this comes with the pretty much the O2 sensor, wideband O2 sensor, uh, serial uh, data cable for data logging, uh, the actual gauge itself with the wiring, a bung, and what is this guy over here? Yeah, pretty much all the wiring that we need to actually set this up correctly and wire this to our car. Um, I'm stoked. Uh, this is one of my favorite gauges. I have this in my Mark IV GTI uh, from Innovate uh, Motorsports. This is one of the best gauges out there. Very, very accurate wideband fuel gauge. Um, I mean, air to fuel gauge. Uh, this is what we're gonna use, again, for the entire thing. 
We're going to teach you guys how to wire this up and how to make it read and actually calibrate the, the sensor itself. Um, these are really, again, these are phenomenal sensors. I love these. And I think I went digital. Let me confirm. I can't remember. Yeah, I went to a full digital gauge. Very, very compact. It just mounts super easy. It's a 52 millimeter gauge. And pretty much it's a full digital gauge with a smoke tinted. Easy, easy product to, to install. I've installed quite a few of these on some of my cars and other people's cars. Um, very, very needed, especially when you start going turbo. Um, again, very excited for this. So I'll probably give them a shout out uh, later down the road when we start doing the DIY for that. Hopefully you guys are excited for that because these are, again, they're easy to install and they're worth it. Um, when we start pulling the dash, because we're actually going to be taking the dash uh, out of this car. So I got a replacement dash for it to clean up the interior because the previous owner kind of messed up the dashboard on this car. So this will be a perfect to perfect uh, time to wire the, the, the O2 sensor through the main bloom when the dash is out. So we get a really, really clean install for this guy. Super, super cool. Uh, if there's anything else? Nope, nothing else in the box. Now we go to El Gigante, the big old box. More likely it opens on the sides. Yep. Oh, it's a kit. This uh, I thought this came. In, I thought these came in pieces. I did. I've never ordered from Mishimoto like this before. So we're gonna take every piece out and then we're gonna unbox every piece. Okay. This is actually gonna be the next DIY for the motor because it's very very vital to the next uh, part of our uh, success for our, the high performance build that we're doing. I'll set this aside, there's nothing else in the box. All right, so first things first, ha, we get an air freshener with a little uh, suction cup and pretty much like uh, probably a catalog. So I'm not gonna open this up, but we're gonna I'll probably give this to one of you guys on Patreon. If you guys want the little Mishimoto thing, I would love for someone to have that. That's super dope. It's the little penguin. I'm probably going to hand, hand that to one of you guys out there. I'll set it into one of the boxes. All right, so I'm going to set these aside. This right here is pretty much the extension for the sandwich plate. You get two of them. We get two A-in fitting um, adapters. Here's the actual sandwich plate. And this is extremely important so you guys understand when you guys do oil coolers. Um, the sandwich plate is pretty much what transfers extra oil to the side. Um, So you'll see here. Now we didn't get a thermostatic one. I believe we didn't. I, I personally didn't think we were gonna, we were going to use it uh, because it's a VR6. VR6s are just hot in general. So I think if we constantly have oil just cooling all the time, we're going to be in much better shape than having a thermostatic switch where we can possibly have an overheating and then we have to wait for it to cool down faster. So I think cooling it down all the time versus having it initially occasionally cooling down this is going to be the better option so so the way the way this works this is actually what goes to the oil factory oil cooler and then there's a piece here that goes in and screws into the factory option that goes across so they gave us two different ones i believe let me confirm that yeah there's two different ones based off the size um, of the threads that are on the factory one. 
So we have this one right here and it should fit right there beautifully and we tighten it down. And now the oil filter goes onto this. Now, depending on the oil filter we're using, that's pretty much what's gonna be going there. Now, on this car, it has an external um, oil filter. It's separate from here. So we have to get the one that comes on here and see closes this, um, which is the other little like that plastic cover that goes on here. So we have to do this and then we get the cover that goes on here and that seals that. So we no longer have uh, oil going through this. This is just be sealed and done. Um, this is a universal kit. So again, like I was saying, uh, you have to put one and you have to seal this and then we no longer need to worry about this. And then we just have this guy doing its job. Pretty freaking cool. But see here, it's a loosey goosey. It's not the right one. They ship you a much larger one. Just like that. It's not as loosey goosey, but it's still loosey goosey. You know, it's not meant to. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, seal. It's just meant to hold this in place and process oil through here and through here. This is just, and this is, it's in the same environment, so it's not affecting anything. There's no coolant going through here. The coolant goes through this pipe right here. Okay, this is what's cooling it, but over here, this is where oil goes through. Now, because we went to a big oil cooler, you guys have to understand there's more oil going through your engine. So add five quarts like normal, let it run for like a few seconds and then flush it through. Uh, what's going to happen though, guys, when this is possible, when you're doing this, um, I wouldn't attach this to the car um, or if we do, um, yeah, you're going to run metal shavings all through your uh, oil cooler. So it's going to take a while to clean all that. Again, it's one of those things that we might have to do prior. We don't, not 100% sure on these motors. So now we're going to open up the actual cooler itself. So another catalog in here, pretty cool. Don't care about it right now. This is what I care about. So this is a 10 roll uh, oil cooler and you'll see here, um, let me open it up. And you see here, why it's called a 10 row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 rows of actual cooling. Um, they already have pre AN fittings installed, which is really, I mean, yeah, AN fit math, threaded fittings already ready. So, ready to go. And then, this guy right here. They gave us two of the exact same line, so I'm not gonna open both of them. It's gonna open one. Now, what a lot of people don't realize, these are pretty large lines. And these lines, okay, take up a lot of oil on the inside of these. So you have to accommodate for all the oil that's gonna go in here and all the oil is going to go on two lines. A lot of times this, a 10 row a 10 row cooler takes about an extra quart of oil give or take. A 16 row will take up almost two quarts of oil in total. So, whenever you guys do these builds, uh, these oil external oil coolers, definitely check your oil levels and then when you're when you're done doing what you're doing, say you're doing an oil change, you drain the oil, you pull the lines off of this and you drain the oil out of this as well. Do not, and I repeat, do not just leave the oil in this when you do oil changes. You're just gonna cycle through dirty oil. Okay, so we get two of the exact same lines um, pretty much from um, 
to go to lo when we locate this. This guy is going to be located. I'm kind of figuring out if I want to locate this at the front of the of the car or the bottom right uh, by the driver side of the car uh, fender line. There's a perfect spot to build a bracket and mount it there and get direct airflow pretty much from the right air duct um, from the uh, Bora R front bumper, which is perfect for this. I mean, if we're going to stance it and be all super cool, we can mount this at the front of the radiator, right at the center uh, radiator if we want to be really cool and run the oil lines through that. Again, I don't know. It's your guys' choice. But this is the first unboxing that we have. Uh, we have more parts coming pretty much every day starting Monday and so forth. So every time we get a batch of, um, of boxes, I'm just going to unbox them, put them back together and store them until everything shows up. We're going to do a DIY on the oil cooler sandwich and everything so you guys can um, see how that's put together. And that way, if you guys want to make the decision of using this, go for it. But thanks for watching this episode of Pinchy Isles and uh, Garage with an unboxing from Eurotuning.com. Hit that smash, uh, wait, ah, smash that subscribe button and like. And as always here at Pinchy Isles Garage, we're going to break, we're going to fix, and we're going to repeat. Peace out, everyone, and have a wonderful day.